special guest uh, calling in right now. It's is Oklahoma Senator Randy Brogdon. He's running for governor of Oklahoma, and uh, he's probably one of the most uh, strict constitutionalists I've ever met. Uh, it's an honor to have you here on the show this evening, sir. Well, I'm honored that you would uh, ask me on. Thank you for the invitation. I understand that uh, you, uh, you've you been doing some uh, some town halls and stuff recently. Uh, I I was uh, able to go to the one that was uh, covering the 10th Amendment. I think uh, you and uh, uh, Representative Keyes just uh, knocked it out of the park. Well, I'll tell you, one of the most enjoyable things about campaigning for governor, I'm going around the state of Oklahoma. Obviously, I'm going to places that I've not seen, even though I have lived my entire life in this state. And we have some beautiful places and some beautiful people, and I'm meeting new friends every, almost every night. And so uh, Charles and I had a great opportunity in Midwest City last week or two to attend a 9-12 town hall meeting, and we had uh, just a tremendous turnout. There were probably well over uh, 200 people there that night, and we each gave about a 10-minute talk, and then we spent the next hour and a half answering questions. Uh, and it was a true town hall, and we got a, a good sense of what the people are yearning for, what the people uh, realize that they are missing, and that is our freedom. Our freedom is being stripped away from us right now by the overbearingness of Congress. And uh, my goal as running for governor is to restore our constitutional liberty and bring us back to the basics, uh, the foundation that this country was founded on, that is constitutional limited government and expansion of freedom one thing that really stuck with uh, with me from that uh, town hall meeting was whenever you said that you know, anything that comes across your desk as governor you would check the constitution before you signed it that would be your 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 test that's exactly right and i have a very uh, limited agenda but it will have a profound effect on the state of oklahoma it'll have a profound effect on the entire nation if I have the opportunity to serve as governor, because the status quo is in jeopardy. I'm a danger to the status quo. Things will not remain the same. We will, uh, we will force Congress back into their constitutional limitations. We, the people, gave Congress 18 enumerated powers. And if Congress pushes down a mandate, my desk here in the state of Oklahoma, I'm going to look in my little pocket constitution, and if it falls outside of the scope, of Article One, Section Eight, I will veto that bill, and I will hold the state legislature's feet to the fire to make sure that that veto is sustained. Like you said, simply following the Constitution would have a profound effect. It would, in fact, be a radical move, not because it's radical in itself, because so few politicians—I mean, almost all of them—do not follow the Constitution, which they swear an oath to. For an executive governor to actually follow it would be radical. It would change things. It would provide an example. It, it could show people that actually following the Constitution works, is effective, is beneficial towards people, beneficial towards the state, and perhaps other states could follow our lead. Is that part of what you meant by having a, a profound effect? It'll, it'll have a nationwide effect around this country. There's no doubt about it because once other states get a glimpse of what is going on in Oklahoma, and, and I can tell you what will be going on. Freedom will be expanding. I plan on making Oklahoma a haven for freedom, a haven for small business, a haven where the, where the individual can prosper and, and keep more of the fruits of his labor. Most of the bills that are pushed down from Congress to the states today are, are blatantly unconstitutional. And the only way that the federal government can get the states to cooperate is, is dangle that carrot in front of the legislator's nose and promise us money. We saw that this year when Congress uh, sucker-punched us with this stimulus scheme uh, of, of President, uh, President Obama's, and, and Congress pushed this through. And now $2.6 billion has been uh, filtered down to the state of Oklahoma. Greed has just taken over the state legislature. Uh, now we're, uh, we have uh, members of ODOT that are talking about uh, accepting another two billion dollars for a high-speed rail, and it's just—it's silliness. Uh, priorities are non-existent. Prioritizing our budget is non-existent in the state. We have a governor that has just literally let our freedom be shackled by the politicians up in Washington D.C., the federal government. And my goal is to restore. I can tell you, change has come to America, and I don't like the change. 
And I'm not mm-hmm. calling for change. I'm calling for something entirely different. I'm calling for restoration. I want to see the values of our founding fathers restored in the heart of every Oklahoman that loves liberty, every American that loves liberty, and are willing to defend it, and I need your help. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I'm having a nationwide online fundraising event September the 18th, this Friday. Go to my uh, page on my website, fightforstatesrights.com fightforstatesrights.com. Do that today and tomorrow and pledge your support for me. And then on September the 18th, go back and donate to the cause of freedom. We must turn this sinking ship around. Congress has overreached far too long into the states, and my goal as governor is to get Congress back into their constitutional bounds, 